Hi everybody. Yeah, I'm kind of sleepy right now, so I thought I'd give a sleepy video a try and to see if you find it just as relaxing as the other more energetic videos when I have a lot of energy. And this is my chair. I got it at a thrift store for $25. I went to this retro store and they they had really expensive prices and then I went over across the street to this church over there and they had a half off furniture everything was 25 no 50 percent off so i got this chair for 25 dollars and this pillow behind me and then i got some other items of furniture like uh that screen over there and that's my my plant. I like to have plants because they're they're they make you feel nice. And there's my golden quail in the window. And then that's my light from a different thrift store, which I thought was antique. And then I read the the bottom of it later, and it said uh, Target. Target home collection. So that was a surprise. And then I got this chair over here. Chair, where are you? Oh, there's my, my table. That's uh, in uh, a mid-century modern table from the thrift store. And there's the chair. I like that chair. That one was also only like $25, so I thought I'd show you all of my chairs because that might be something that interests you. If chair collecting is your hobby, then this is the episode for you. That plant over there is not looking so good. I wonder why that happens sometimes where just the plant suddenly just starts to look bad. So if you know how to take care of plants put notes in the comments that will help me learn how to to take care of the plant the right way. One thing I want to clarify is that this is my actual voice and maybe if I was having a real conversation with another person at the same time I might sound a little less robotic but in general, I tend to sound a lot like a, a robot at all times. And one of the reasons for it is because I, uh, I improvise everything I say, as you've probably noticed. And that combined with talking slow makes it kind of slow. Because I have to think of what I'm going to say and... Sometimes I don't know what is going to happen, so I might just start talking about pickup trucks and how I am shopping for pickup trucks. And that is something that makes I have to think about and then to see what direction I go in. I took a few uh, improv classes when I lived in Atlanta, I was doing my uh, PhD there uh, at Emory, if you know where that is. It's kind of in the suburbs of Atlanta. And that's not where I'm from, though. I just moved there for grad school. But it has a pretty good comedy scene there. So I took a few comedy courses. Dad's Garage is amazing. Uh, I really miss the classes there. Where I am now in Knoxville, there aren't really any good uh, improv uh, opportunities for classes or in general. 
but I want to tell you a bit about how improv works in case you're interested in it. I know that oftentimes people they have issues sleeping because they have a lot on their mind or their mind is uh, oftentimes uh, racing and okay I'm not good at holding this as I film that's some good water so there aren't uh there are lots of people who have uh racing minds at night where they think a lot about different things and oftentimes that's rooted in just uh having anticipation of what needs to be done the next day or a certain way to to plan things and what improv does is it helps you to be more in the moment where you're not planning far ahead into the future. Basically just the next word or the next few sentences is the level at which you're working. So it's right in the moment and you kind of have to train yourself to do that. So when I first started doing stand-up comedy, uh, for instance, I used to feel much more comfortable with that because I would prepare absolutely every single thing that I would say. And then eventually I started to do some more uh, improv, which terrified me at first because I didn't know what was going to happen. And just that feeling of not knowing uh, can be very scary. But over time, what I've started to learn is that I actually feel more comfortable with improv now because, believe it or not, it actually makes things more real. Uh, not everything is planned out. It's not really a big deal if I mess up or if I say something the wrong way or I forget to say something because I think if I planned what I was saying it would just be really all over the place where somehow I'd have to bring tomatoes into the conversation and if it's not part of where my mind is going already then that's really not going to work. And if I were in that mindset where I wanted to say all of these specific things and I miss it, I'd start to feel bad about myself for missing it. And kind of it just is a whole process that ends up not being good for you. That doesn't mean there are not times in life when it's good to be very prepared. Of course there are. Um, but there are a lot in which uh, it's good to give up a bit of uh, that control and just to let things flow as they will uh, that whole just dynamic of giving up a bit of control and just letting life go uh, as it will. It will no matter what. So you might as well. Uh, kind of like being on a, a river and uh, you might as well just go downstream instead of swimming up it. Or if you need to go upstream, you might as well just get out the river and drive up a few miles or walk and then just get back in the water and then go downstream again. Which, uh, is a lot less stress inducing. So I'm talking about this because I want to just uh, make it clear to you that this can be a helpful way of uh, relaxing at night, actually, to uh, embrace some of the ideas from improv to help you do that. 
where it's about training yourself slowly over time to let a little bit more unpredictability enter your life and to become comfortable with that and just uh, through the process of doing that you'll find that it just eliminates a lot of stress from your life and when there's less stress there's less to think about and less to plan you'll find that really there are not too many things left to be on your mind or if there are you can very easily just put them aside and uh, just to go to bed so give that a try if you are in an area where you can take improv classes I really recommend it and people always tell me no I can't do that because I'm not funny and the thing is with improv if you try to be funny that's when it's really bad so don't even try it's all about being in the moment I can kind of tell you what a scene in improv would be like if you're doing short form improv it's kind of like you okay let's say there are two people um someone from the audience might give you a word like a armchair and the two of you without really communicating have to begin to kind of play off of each other in order to begin to create a scene and you might have an idea in your head already of where you want it to go but then your partner will end up doing something that totally changes the direction which is why it's good not to be too fixed on one particular thing and that actually applies to a lot of other things in life like if a job opportunity doesn't go the right way or a career goal you just take it in another direction and then later on another direction comes along and you take that and you keep doing that and that's basically all improv is I think of it kind of like a, a reflection of life so the main part at the beginning of a scene in improv is when you are building the platform as well as developing your characters and to develop your own character as well as the scene you need both of each other to build off of each other so it can't just be one person driving it or the other so there are ways to make it easier to for the other person so if the word is armchair you might begin to sit down and then that might spark them to think oh we're on a bus or you try to enact some sort of behavior or action to give the other person clues about where you are what the scene is and also to give that person clues about who they are and then who you are as well so that's a very helpful thing in life as well uh, if you're in a conversation with anyone to really realize that it's good to help them out the weird noise outside so let's talk about the the rest of the scene then so you've spent some time building your character building the platform and that's the part in which you start to create some sort of conflict as well as like an emotional connection that's rooted to the conflict and that's kind of the escalation of the scene which is basically just like your basic form of a TV show you have where it's established at the beginning conflict and then you can probably guess what the finale would be then which would be the the resolution of that so I'm not exactly sure how the conflict or the resolution would pertain to how I'm saying improv can uh, help you to release some of your issues and to not have so much on your mind or racing mind and just being able to let all of that go in order for you to relax but 
maybe if one thing it's telling you that no matter what, whatever you're doing is going to lead to something. And uh, it might not be perfect. It might turn out that the scene uh, ends in some sort of game where you fall into a loop of two people doing the same thing over and over. Um, I was in one scene where I was a little kid and then the other person was the babysitter and I didn't want to go to bed. So the game became for me to find ways to keep extending my time being able to stay awake. And that's okay for a scene. It doesn't really have as much of that emotionally connected conflict, but it can still be fun. So it's a key thing. Uh, it can still be fun. So um, yeah, I just felt like talking about that a bit. And I should probably follow up on this again to do something a bit more structured. As you can tell, that entire conversation about improv was improvised, basically. Kind of just based on my initial thoughts about it, and then structured into this very loose conversation about how it relates to sleep. So. It's a nice thing because it takes you less time. You're not as concerned about if it goes poorly or well, and you can just release it into the universe and it can either go somewhere or it cannot in either way, that's fine. So I feel like that's a, a good thing with most contribution. It can do something or it can't. That's really the extent of it. So I think people might see some of the videos I do as being of really lower quality. And that's sort of just my style. I find it more humorous and more fun to kind of fly by the seat of your pants with what you do and where as long as you stick to your theme and you just have fun with it, it ends up being more fun than something polished because you can make it weird, you can go on tangents, you don't have to stick to just reviewing some sort of software or product or doing all of these specific elements that you typically would in a video um, that sort of have become so commonplace that they're part of a genre now. Like all of the comments about click in the description to go to this uh, company's sponsor's site and subscribe so you can support the show and all of these comments you hear over and over in time where if you think about it at the very outset um, when all of this began that would have seemed really weird so all I'm trying to say there if I'm saying anything I'm not sure and if it's nothing, that's okay, because I hope it helps you kind of chill out and uh, get to sleep. So the main thing I'm just trying to say there is that it's good to loosen up in even in the things we do, the content we make, because it allows things to be spontaneous, unpredictable, it's a key source of humor, improv is oftentimes humorous even when it's with the most serious people you've ever met. Just uh, the unpredictability of what they say and how it will interact with others is what makes it 
so amazing. Oh, and I have uh, sunshine. We're kind of getting out of winter and uh, I'm really not a fan of when it gets super dark in the winter and it kind of the sun sets at like 4.30. Like I lived in Chicago for a little bit because I kind of wanted to explore comedy there and I was in there in the middle of winter so the sun would set at like four o'clock some days. And uh, I remember one time, well, if there's no sunshine, it just makes me even more tired than I probably already seem. And the sun would set at like four, so I would just be exhausted. I got to like a, a Friday night and fell asleep at like 7.30 p.m. And believe it or not, I woke up the next day at 5.30 p.m. And I had to double check. I'm like, is it 5.30 a.m. or p.m.? Because it's dark outside again and it was p.m. So I slept... I don't know, close to a full day, and I think the only reason why I woke up was because I had to pee. And uh, when you have slept so long that it's dark again, it's kind of like I should just go back to bed and hope I wake up when the sun shine is out. But I stayed up for a few hours and uh, went to the convenience store that also has a, a Bitcoin machine. That's kind of cool. It was like the the most gourmet uh, little corner store market place. And I got some snacks there and then just probably watched Star Trek because just in general I can watch Star Trek for years and then I when I finish one show, I can just switch to another one and then go back to it years later and then rewatch everything. So, I like the next generation one from the 90s, but also the, the new Star Trek with uh, um, the Discovery show, Star Trek, is pretty good. And I like Saru as one of the characters who's played by Doug Jones, who is a very famous, uh, I think I think he's skilled as a contortionist, but also is just like a movement specialist in general, and can do all kinds of movements of different creatures, and was on that show Face Off a few times to teach the creature creationist how to move or how to get their actors to move the character in a certain more natural looking way based on whatever the characters were. Okay, so I'm probably going to go now because uh, I uh, am going to make dinner. I wanted to make a, a Korean barbecue stew, I think it is. I have to look in my cookbook again. And it takes me like 10 hours to cook things. I should show you sometime because that would be a, a long, long video. And my kitchen's really small, so it's like you put one thing on the counter and then there's no more counter because that's how small it is. So I'm going to try to do that now and let's uh, hope it turns out pretty well. 
and hopefully I don't get to bed as late as I sometimes do because I'm cooking until <laughs> like 11 p.m. at night even if I started at 8 p.m. and that's the thing about the blue what is it called those bl blue apron meals they do not take less than an hour they take like five hours and I don't know what they're talking about if they think it's that fast like if they want to cook it for me and then I heat it up I can do that in <laughs> less than 45 minutes so okay I hope you uh, enjoyed my rambling conversation about improv and can uh, also hear how over time as I speak more my voice becomes a little less robotic and it sounds less like I'm reading from a script so I hope you've enjoyed that and uh, I'll talk to you later so sleep well and have a good night